Hello, Gregor Artero here with the Prometheus Initiative, and today I'm going to break down the basic geometry to a rodin coil. And I'm studying it in 2D geometry, and I laid out the 12 point um, uh, deca star, whatever you want to call it, 12 point rodin coil, and basically took a midpoint of one of these segments and found the distance from the center to there, and basically I ended up creating a circle. And then I discovered that I could put five circles here, and I thought it was a perfect match. And I discovered it's not exactly a perfect match. This point A, and there's point N right here. A is closer um, to K, the center point, than N by ratio of 0 0.9969, so on. So there's a differential um, in it that David Street would probably be interested in. He's working a lot with uh, differentials. Um, it could represent a layer of where the energy moves, except uh, A is not lying on the exact center point of this sphere, but these ones, the 12 points on the outside, are laying on the exact um, circle. So technically you'd want to shift this coil um, a, li a little bit in size, so either you create a thin layer that's balanced around the entire toroid, um, or that represents the wire diameter. Um, but that would be my understanding of what to do with it. Um, require a little bit more math to get the points where they're balanced on both sides. You might actually need to get into 3D geometry to do that. And uh, the ratio which you guys would be concerned in when making a rotating coil would be the ratio of uh, K to N and N to D. Um, so it's radius to radius or diameter to diameter of these circles, which is uh, 0 0.7013016167040821 0 um, and so this is the 0 0.7 um, or this part n to k and this is 1 um, or 2 or like 1.4 for the diameters but that's that's the ratio and the vertical axis from like m to n would be a perfect circle um, that's the geometry of the toroid you want and what this represents, you can see this in the pole of Saturn. There's a pentagon forming on the top of it, and hurricanes, the eye of the hurricanes, been seen to form pentagons before. And basically what this represents is you have these five circles on the outside, and then you have another circle which is created right here. Um, and I can't remember but there's a interesting similarities between the geometry between this one and this this area between this one and this one i think it's the area of the bigger one represents all five so you have almost these two different levels of differentiation in terms of how the vortexes can intermesh except the smaller one seems one that makes more sense cuz you have this little dead zone right here and this is if you take you know your hands and one hand represents a clockwise um, rotation with your fingers pointing in, and the other hand represents counterclockwise rotation. These are like gears working together. And so it's this basic amplification device, essentially. And yeah, so there is the rotating coil and pentagonal geometry, and I'm going to show how this ties in now with the dodecahedron, because dodecahedron represents numbers 5 and 12. We got 12 points and 5 spheres um, around one sphere. And uh, yeah, cool stuff. All right, so now we're in Maya, Autodesk Maya, if you know the program. Uh, I went to school for it and then dropped out. And this is my um, pentamotor or dodecamotor, whatever you want to call it. Some based on five um, is the <laughs> main notion I'm going for. And, and uh, so here's how it relates to the, the dodecahedron and what I'm going to do with it with the rotating coil. Um, and so dodecahedron is made up of 12. Uh, 12 faces, 12 pentagonal faces, and there's 30 points um, in it. Um, actually, wait, that's I'm pretty sure that's wrong. That's no, 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 no. There's 30 in it. No, there's 20. 20, 20 points. So these are, would represent magnets. So the blue would represent north, and the red would represent south. Um, so there's 20 magnets or 20 points, and there's 30 connections between the points, um, which are these little guys here. You can just see them, which really don't even need to be there. Um, but, uh, so, if you lay out the magnets in a dodecahedron, there's sort of four series it lays out. Um, five, 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 and five. The, the bottom top fives, uh, would create a flow going, uh, 
up is what we're trying to do here is the flow going up and uh, what happens then on the side you have these two segments of five so five blue and five red um, you actually get these uh, ten triads going on so this one right here is in the center of these three triads and this one's in the center of these three triads so the ten on the outside which respond to the five pentacolon geometry of the inside. It'll keep trying to align, but technically it can never align because it's a diamagnetic substance. And so if the five um, points, so I have quartz crystals, or if you use the bis bismuth crystal idea, which I'll share in a second, um, it would line up with, uh, with uh, say, the five blue ones, which would be self, and it would repel them, and it would be attracted to the five next to it. Um, because it's going to be repelling the other ones, and we want to be attracted to the other five next to it. It's going to go to a line with those ones, and then it's going to be like uh, now being repelled by those and attract the other. And so it's going to technically go back and forth, back and forth. Um, and these magnetic fields are being drastically amplified by the five on the top and the five bomb. They're more support magnets, while the ten on the side are really doing a lot of the work. And at the top, we have a cone, which is going to be made out of a diamagnetic substance with five. Uh, magnets around it, which would be then amplifying each other. Um, so this sort of look, would look like a blue magnet technically here. And if you go in, we have um, some wire coiling around this cone, and then the the uh, roding coil, which is the traditional uh, two twelve uh, point pointed uh, circuits, and the third missing, which a lot of people are not using anymore. And uh, I applied that to the cone up here. And uh, this cone has uh, 12, 12, and, or there's 24 um, spirals going into the center point where they all converge. You can, and I did it in two different ways. So you can actually have it, um, oh, wrong one. Uh, there's that one. All right. And this would just be, there's 12 um, coils on this one, and just without doing the rotting coil fashion. And uh, I'm going to put it back. So, Control H. There we go. Um, and these work as capacitors. So, if this one is negatively charged, you're going to pump electrons into it, and so it's going to create a magnetic field by the electrons pumping into it. But then as the charge builds, it's going to slow down the direct current, which I'm planning on using. And so it's going to be a constantly changing direct current. And, uh, and to the point where it stops, or it's fully charged, and then all of a sudden it releases all the energy into the positive terminal. Um, the negative terminal, um, as the negative charge has been shown with... Um, uh, Thomas Townsend Brown's work um, that uh, the a negative charge represents a black hole and a positive charge represents a white hole. So this would represent a black hole geometry pulling, or white hole geometry, so electrically charged is a white hole, um, or negatively charged is a white hole. So it's going to be pushing energy down, this being positively charged on the top, it's going to be a white hole um, pulling, um, pushing energy out or black hole, this gets so confusing. It's going to be a black hole pulling energy in, it's going to be a white hole in the bomb pushing energy out, so you're going to get a vector going up. Um, and all the water in the center, the dielectric, which I'm going to be using, which is not pictured here, the water would um, be polarized and have a gravitational pull um, upward, and that would be the main thing having the gravitational pull. Uh, um, and the other thing that would happen is the uh, diamagnetic substance in the center of this cone um, would also be pulled up um, if you set it up right in terms of capacitance. But that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to go into that right now. 